is it another example of wokeism? Or is it genuinely offensive to some communities? Joining us now from Oxford is student and activist Femi Nylander, who says rural Britannia is part of our imperial history. It celebrates slavery, shouldn't be used. From North London, we're joined by Eve Pollard, who believes this is ridiculous. It's like banning fireworks on the 5th of November. Well, it has divided the country. Femi, what is offensive to you about rural Britannia? Um, so we need to contextualise this within the fact that the media has chosen to focus on uh, rural Britannia and not on some of the wider issues which the empire and slavery have led to in the UK society. I mean, Mercy Baguma, um, the lady from Uganda who died recently um, with her child next to her and the rest of it, right? These are the actual material results today of this history of slavery and colonialism, which rural Britannia as a song um, celebrates. I mean, it's not just the line, Britain right, never it? shall be slaves. It doesn't, Femi. Well, it it's does. Good, like, it, it doesn't does, celebrate Piers. slavery. It says Britain, Brit Piers, <laughs> It says Britons never shall be slaves at the same time as Britain is leading the inter um, the, the, the slave trade. You said it two minutes ago. Uh, you were talking about a conversation with your daughter um, where you said it's all about winning. And this is this is the British attitude at that point. Dread and envy of them all. What's the wrong with being about... So what's wrong states, with winning? Most in their turn... What, when winning means being the dread of other people and colonising them and enslaving them, and dragging them across the Atlantic in slave ships, um, where they are thrown into the river if they don't fit but that to the wasn't, cargo, as right? you know, they, as you know, I'm sure you studied the history of the song. That wasn't why the song was written. You know that. Well, actually, Piers, I didn't study the history of the song. If, I, if you asked me divorced, beheaded, died, divorced, beheaded, survived, then I'd be able to answer very well because everyone in the UK learns about Henry VIII and his wives. In school, I learned nothing about British slavery. Here's my, my point would be this, Femi. I think we've done so many uh, uh, programmes, particularly since the appalling uh, killing of George Floyd, about very serious race issues. Mm. And there's a clear racial inequality still in this country and many other countries. Uh, and, and it has to be tackled. It's systemic and it has to be tackled. My issue with this kind of furore is it is a terrible distraction from real issues, and all it does is wind everybody up who well, might I think otherwise. That's Femi's point. Who might it? otherwise. No, but is, just, my point is. You think the distraction is caused by distraction. the media? The distraction, no, the distraction is that we can't even get over this basic stuff. The distraction yeah. is that the, the, the media, the Express, the Daily Mail, the right wing media can take something which is framed as a culture war and say, let the, remember that the decision initially was to remove it, and the furor was the right saying, "How dare they remove this?" Black Lives Matter has caused no furor. Actually, I don't think it's just the right. Femi, I'm, not, I'm not right there wing. Femi, 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 let me jump Piers, in. That's a matter me, of debate. With respect to you, um, <laughs> let me just say something. I'm not remotely right wing, but I found mm -hmm. it objectionable. I love the last night of the proms. It plays to all the great parts of Great Britain of patriotism coming together, singing joyfully. And I think it's the wrong battle to pick, that most people in this country don't find it offensive, it. they enjoy it. it. And when you try and make that the thing, if you make that the hill to die on, then the decision. cause doesn't get okay. helped. You okay. get okay. Femi, go ahead. BBC made, an internal decision. BBC made an internal decision, which was very quietly done, which was not that big, uh, because they thought that a song which celebrates slavery and imperialism might be better replaced by something else. The 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 media doesn't celebrate slavery. Femi, you keep saying that, it says and I, with respect to you, the lyrics slaves. of the song and the, the history of the people. song, it does Whilst not celebrate the slavery. The, the, that is, a complete, slave trip. that is a completely misleading statement. If it I doesn't was to celebrate and, 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 slavery. Okay, let's listen to what Femi has said. And let's say Femi will never um, be raped or, or, or stolen from, then it's a massive amount of cognitive dissonance. If you're saying that you will be the dread and um, the dread of other people whilst you're running a slave trade, but you will never be a slave. So if it said Britons will never be colonised whilst you're out there colonizing, right, then then that's a cognitive dissidence, right? And this level of cognitive dissidence is not just in, in... But as you say, the media likes this cultural thing because it's very easy for people to get around the idea of it's patriotism. It's not the media and, that created the culture war. It's the, the BBC. Let's bring in Eve Pollard. See, Eve, my, my issue is not that Femi doesn't make perfectly good points about the history of the British Empire, but this song was written before the main thrust of the British Empire even happened. This was written at a time when the Spanish and the Dutch were ruling the waves, and it was designed to say, we will not be taken over by the Spanish and the Dutch. It had nothing to do, actually, I don't believe, from my studying of the history of the song, with what Femi says it does. So it's certainly not a celebration I, I, of slavery. 
I, I, and if you read, if you listen to the words, and I, I sympathize with Femi, I know there is still racism that has to be sorted out, but it's not the right-wing media. It's the BBC who I think have a, done an own goal. One organization cannot ban something that's part of the warp and weft of this country. Every year, my pa- I'm the first of my family to be British. My parents were immigrants. They met here. Uh, My parents used to love the last night of the proms. And if you listen to the words, it says, Britain never shall be, shall always be free. I think there are lots of countries now, look at Belarus, look at countries in Africa and the Middle East, who would love to be free and not run by tyrants. And I think it's an own goal by the BBC because it's patriotic. It is not really not meant to offend anyone. And if people think in the future the words should be changed, there should be a national discussion about it. We if shouldn't just. Do you just... think we, we know that Tim Davy has taken over as Director General of the BBC? He started this week. Do you think he should reverse the decision? Or do you think that will cause as many problems as the initial decision did? I think he's got a lot of problems. So why not add one more? If I was him, I would get last year's, you know, the recording of last year. I'd put it on enormous blasters and blast it out of the proms. And remember, the proms were not just held in the lovely Royal Albert Hall. When we used to watch, you used to see people in Enniskillen, in Scotland, all over the country, lining up, singing the songs, not feeling antagonistic. Okay. To Femi, but Femi, 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 I Femi want, back. Well, Femi. I wanted to know, Femi, if you would feel, mm-hmm. if Tim Davy did reverse the decision, whether actually that mm-hmm. would compound the problem even more. As I say, this decision was made, and so this language of banning is completely um, non non-consequential. At the end of the day, it was not banned. The the BBC is not banning the use of this song. The BBC is making an internal decision to say that in our show, we're not going to use it because we think that it might um, communicate something we don't want to communicate about our views on the history of slavery and empire. They bowed bowed to the woke mob who've been actually uh, uh, haranguing them into trying to be ashamed of it. You need to have a position. You need to be able to say, if I ban something, I'm a dominating thing who's saying this is banned and no one else can. BBC is making an internal decision. The media is responding to that. And then the BBC is having to reverse its decision because a lot of the same people who were out um, defending the statue of Churchill and attacking police officers and all this when this came out, right? The conversations we need to be having, the conversations the media should be having, are about um, the the migrant crisis, about the Windrush. Yeah, but these uh, the are conversations, the Femi. Femi, let yeah, me yeah, jump in. Yeah. Yeah. Femi, no, no show, no too show too has too done more on Windrush too than too this too. show, right? We we do all these things. My point is, I'm on your side about all that. And by the way, mm-hmm. I would completely be on your side if you were to look at the British Empire and pick a lot of holes mm-hmm. in what went on then. I would agree with you. That's not the debate to be had. My point is, when the BBC does something like this, because they're worried about offending people, it then becomes a mm-hmm. huge story, which is a massive distraction. And you're quite right, the right-wing mm-hmm. media will jump on it and make it what it is, because it suits their agenda. But from my point of view, as a Liberal, I would say to other Liberals, come on, there are better hills to die on than this. All you're going to do is enrage Middle England. You're not going to bring anybody with you. You're going to say what? You're going to ruin the last night of no the problems. No one was enraged when it happened. A song, no a song one, that no you one, say... No one was enraged a... until it was made a huge issue by the print media. I mean, it happened... No, it was made a huge song, issue by the BBC. How many people How many people do you think would have watched BBC Proms? How many people in the UK... So, the, firstly, the people who watch BBC Proms in the UK is a very thin stream society. A lot of people don't watch it. The people who do watch it, how many people do you think, if there was no media for it, would have got to the end and be like, wait a minute... Right, let me ask you a difficult question. Let me ask you a difficult question. Let me ask you a difficult question. It was made into The BBC made a decision and they have to stand by that decision. Let me ask you a question. Well, this right year, this year this alone, Femi, decision. let me speak. This year alone, we've had John Legend having a campaign to rewrite the lyrics to Baby, It's Cold Outside because it's problematic in the Me Too era. And we've now had this huge furore mm. over Rule Britannia and Land of Hope and Glory. Here's the debate we never seem to have. What about all the rap music spewing out disgusting encouragements and enticements to violence, the misogyny, the sexism, the appalling language used in a lot of rap music. Why do we never have that debate? Why is it always about baby, it's cold outside, or rule Britannia? That debate is often had. It's not. That debate is often had. And rap music, as rap music peers, um, as as to inform you, like all types of music, I mean, rap music 
has elements of misogyny. All music has elements of misogyny. There's also rap music, which has been part of a long uh, historical struggle for black people to have a... Um, the reason that rap music came about is because bl black people didn't have access to violins. They had access to very simple beats um, that reminded them of their homelands that they could then use to do poetry of. Rap music is poetry, and a lot of rap music isn't um, misogynistic. I'd invite you to listen to Dear Mama by Tupac, which talks about... Yeah, I'm not going to speak in a generalised term about it, but a lot of rap music, as you know, a lot of rap music well, is a lot of rap music is misogynistic. African Caribbean okay. culture, which yeah, says, Femi, it's, Femi. says that it's misogynistic, Femi. which says that it's anti anti, anti which says that it's violent, which says this, that, the rest. And yes, some rap music is, and some rock music is. And so, I mean, look at Gigi Allen, who was this horrific. Look at like there can be any. Yeah, but I agree with you. I, I agree with you about all this. Yeah, but on this, <laughs> on this, I agree with you. Wagner was famously. Hugely misogynist and anti Semitic. I listen, Femi. Femi, right let me jump in. Femi, people do have these. Femi, things. my point is and this the two big furores over songs this year have been Royal Britannia and Baby is Cold Outside. To me, as a liberal, that is barking mad. The idea that liberals want to make that the, the hill to fight on, well, do you I find remember, ridiculous. Do you remember the you remember the, um, the 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 scandal that happened with um, kind of trap music and the banning of um, what's the name? There's a very specific type of Afro-Caribbean grime music which was banned, and there was a um, a um, I think a Channel Four outlet which in which they took MP quotes and they yeah. attached it to the style drill of music. music and, yeah. and so drill music, precisely, um, to show why MP quotes were in many ways more misogynistic yeah. than the and drill music, violent. which was criminalised yeah. by the government, and okay. more violent. So uh, to say that black music is not discussed and criminalised is just, is just not, yeah. not okay. the case. Right. My, my point really is I think and the well, balance is out of kilter. Femi, you've made some very good points. It's great to have you on the programme. Come back again soon. Final word to Eve, because... You know, a lot of people just feel sad that somehow the last night of the proms gets sullied like this and suddenly becomes something to be ashamed of. I think that's true. And I think that the BBC... Um, actually, I think it's really rather sad because this is actually a very popular programme, last night of the proms, and against what Femi said. And also, the surveys, all the polls say that 55% of this country, or the people polled, said they were really sad and only 5% said it shouldn't be shown. I think what we've got to do is come together. This is one of those amazing problems that we have with race now. Come together. Let's discuss it over a year. But you cannot have one organisation saying this goes out the window. It's part of the warp and weft of yeah, this you know country. What I would do? You know what I would do, Eve? I would actually but, have a... I would look at having a hologram of Dame Vera Lynn yeah. at this year's yeah. event as a tribute to her. Right. They can do the hologram. Yeah. Have a hologram of her singing Rule Britannia a land of Hobie Group, which she sang many, many times, including, I think, at the proms, and have the entire country sing along and actually not be ashamed by it. 